Welcome to the BS Review. Today we're talking about Wonder Woman, the new movie in the DC Extended Universe. And in this video, we're going to be talking about all the spoilers. So if you want to watch our spoiler-free review, we will have it linked up in the cards. There was a lot we loved about this movie, and we'll talk about it. There was a couple things we didn't love as much either. The movie begins with present-day Wonder Woman, and it takes place after Batman vs. Superman, and she's working at the Louvre. And Bruce Wayne gives her a briefcase with a little note in it, and it contains the picture of her from World War I. And from there we go back in time all the way to when she was a kid. And that part of the movie I felt like you could have cut out completely. It didn't really need to be there. I guess it gives some context for where she is after Batman vs Superman. But really it was just to have a little note from Batman in it. Because we know that Zack Snyder and the DC Extended Universe loves their little note passing and emailing back and forth. <laughs> the emails. The emails. Yeah, the, the Batman emails are probably my favorite part of the Snyderverse. And by favorite, you mean not favorite. Yeah. <laughs> They're the most hilarious part, is why Wonder Woman and Batman are emailing. I actually really enjoyed the parts of the movie that were on the mascara. I thought they were beautifully done and it was wonderful to see a lot of color in a DC movie. I'm honestly very tired of the grayscale. So having the very bright paradise type colors was just really refreshing to see. And I think that the Amazons that were on the island were just wonderfully done. I think that the casting was excellent. You have all these strong maternal characters who, you know, they're older, but they're also kick-ass and they're like super buff and just overall fantastic. And nothing was cooler than the first battle scene when they all just run and jump off the cliff and swing down. It was really cool to see all the Amazons in action. Yeah, and the CGI that was done during that scene with the slow motion and then like doing the bow and arrows, it was just a really, really cool scene. Another scene that stood out to me in this movie in a totally opposite way from the beautiful <laughs> badassery of Themyscira was the scene where... Wonder Woman and Steve are on the boat heading to London and I thought that was just a really well done like quiet moment between the two of them. It really destroyed the stereotype that very easily could have been done with her being a very naive character and not knowing about you know the intricacies of sex and things like that. I really liked how they did it. I just think they easily could have gone for the whole like oh no I don't know what that is please explain kind of thing and I think that Honestly, probably would have been done with a male director or a bad male director. And I really like that she's like, no, I've read 12 books about this. I know what it's like. I get it. And honestly, men aren't needed for pleasure. <laughs> I thought that one of the cooler parts of this movie was that they had their slower moments. Is that, so, like the scene on the boat, and there was many other scenes where they could have gone the route of having Wonder Woman just punch her way through this entire movie and just fight scene after fight scene. And I guess it would have been okay, but instead they had whole gaps, 30 to 40 minutes, where they would just build the characters. They'd have conversations. There was a lot of quiet moments where you got to know these characters instead of just seeing them fight the whole time. It allowed you to get emotionally attached to people without it feeling like the directors were like, you have to love this person! <laughs> and you're like, oh no, I just absolutely do because of the quieter moments. I personally love when action movies have those smaller moments where you get to see the more uh, sensitive sides of people. They really did a good job of having Diana's character not feel forced or overly aggressive or masculine or feminine the entire time. One of the big moments of the film was when they were in No Man's Land and you know, and Steve looks at her and goes, no one can cross this, no one can, no man can get across here, this is no man's land. And I feel like the movie could have gone for a really cheap moment there and had her like turn around and be like, I am no man, and then go do that. And they really avoid doing that throughout the entire film of being like, look, she's a girl, she's a woman, and look how she can do all this stuff. Instead, it was more like, look at this person, and they have the ability to do these things, and Diana's character never really was focused on the fact that she was a woman mm -hmm. as much as she just had goals and ideas of being like, no, I have to help these people. And throughout the film, anytime someone tells Diana that she can't do something or that she has to stay put, instead of her pulling the whole like, you can't tell me what to do, I'm gonna do it anyway, she would just like go and do it unannounced, which I think was a really big testament to the type of character she's going to be, that she wasn't doing things to defy people or she didn't have to prove herself. She was just like, why should I listen to you? 
I'm gonna go do this and I don't need your permission, but she didn't have to throw that in people's faces. As I've mentioned before in other reviews, I tend to not like most romances that are put on either big screen or small screen or even in books. I think that a lot of times they're just forced and poorly done. That being said, I really enjoyed how they did Steve and Diana's romance in this movie. I feel like they didn't make it a major plot point, which I enjoyed because I don't think it needed to be the focus of the movie at all. And I really like that Diana was the one who kind of pursued it. You didn't get the sense from Steve, like, at all, in my opinion, through the first half that he was like, I'm gonna get with this chick because she's awesome. I never felt like he was really pursuing her. And then they have that quiet moment when, you know, he takes her to her room and she just does the whole, like, kind of looks at him and basically invites him non-verbally to stay. And I like that she was the one who um, put that foot forward. Yeah, I thought it was really cool how they did the entire actual romance section with zero words. Because this movie took so much time to get you to care about these characters and really build them up, by the end, you really care about these people. And Steve Trevor ends up getting on a plane to sacrifice himself and stop the gas from spreading out all over uh, the battlefield and killing thousands of people. He ends up flying off and blowing up. And there's a really cool scene where, once again, they do a cool shot where he has this whole conversation with diana that she can't hear because the bomb went off right in her ears and he basically comes up to her and goes i have to go i love you and leaves and she doesn't realize this until later and she's thinking back at you know oh this is i remember he said that he loved me and then she sees this plane blow up and it it was very emotional. It was really sad to see him go. Like we said in our spoiler-free review, our biggest critique of the movie was that, especially in the second and third act when they got to the World War, it was very similar to Captain America the First Avenger. Uh, the ragtag group of soldiers they got together was almost like a carbon copy of the group from Captain America, and even the ending where the Steve had to get in the plane Full of whatever was going to kill everyone and he had to sacrifice himself to stop it it felt very very derivative of that movie but I still think they made it their own but there were definitely some parts where you felt like it was a copy I do think in this movie we had something happen that could potentially turn into a plot hole depending on if they explain it in the next movie or not but, you know, in Batman vs. Superman, we see that scene where Diana walks into Bruce's party and she's got the dress on with the hilt of her sword sticking out the back, which was one of the coolest uh, fashion moments from that movie. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in this movie, we see where that sword came from. You know, it's the supposedly god killer sword. And then we see Ares destroy the sword, but not the hilt part. So at some point... I guess she has to have a new sword forge to have in Batman vs. Superman that still has the same hilt. Or maybe not. I'm not sure if they're going to explain that or not. I know it's a pretty minor point, but it's just something that I was thinking about as we watched it. So we'll have to see what they do to explain that if they choose to explain it. That's our spoiler thoughts on Wonder Woman. We overall really enjoyed the film and we're super excited to see what they do with that character. And we hope that Justice League ends up being just as good as this one. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below and feel free to subscribe. We're going to be continuing to bring lots of reviews and content to this channel. And leave a comment below. Tell us what you thought about Wonder Woman. We'd love to hear from you. Also, come chat with us on our social medias. We'll have all of our links down in the description. And we'll see you on our next video.